Hey guys, welcome back to the Brotherhood of Gaming channel. If you're new here, welcome. It's a pleasure to have you here. Thank you so much for clicking on one of our videos. It means a whole lot to us, and we hope you stick around and show your support. For the rest of you, where the hell you been? <laughs> I'm just joking. Anyway, let's go back to the world of cell phone games. Oh yeah. You know, the kind that love to rip you off for all of your hard-earned cash and then leave as quickly as they came and just discontinue, especially if you're in Namco games. Well... There was a recent cell phone game that did manage to catch my attention, and if, if you've seen the title of this video, you know exactly which one it is. Disney's Mirrorverse. Now, if you're once again very familiar with us, you know that we are big fans of the Disney brand, and I mean, how could we not be? After all, one of our all-time favorite franchises is uh, pretty obvious. So, when we first saw Disney's Mirrorverse, and honestly, I had been seeing it long before the cell phone game actually came out, if you go to video game stores such as GameStop or even Target or Walmart or any store that likes to collect figures and sell them, I've been running into a lot of these lately. These Disney Mirrorverse figures, and they really confused me because they looked like characters that you would see in Kingdom Hearts, or at least renditions of these famous characters but they looked different, and they looked kind of like their on-screen counterparts, but far more badassified, <laughs> to make a word up. Uh, so it got my attention. I was wondering, are these part of a game that I don't know about? And, well, they sort of were, but the game really hadn't come out yet. Or if it did, I certainly didn't notice anything about it, because I've been seeing these characters for a long time with nothing going on. Anyway, I finally decided to look into it, and... It's finally happened. Disney's Mirrorverse is available, it's free to play, and when those words come together, it's truly frightening. So, does, uh, does Mirrorverse have anything to offer outside of just wanting my money? Is there depth to the story of this game? Is there some fun to be had at all? Or is it just there to do what big businesses like to do? Well, let's dive in and, uh... Take a gander. Skepticism aside, I think the best way to start off this adventure is from the beginning. So, in lore, the world of Disney as we've known has always existed, and it still does. However, somewhere across the universe, two stars collided. And just like that, a multiverse was created. And whereas the OG universe is still exactly as it is, in this alternative universe, everything is similar but a tad more chaotic. The Mirrorverse, as it's known, houses every Disney character we've come to know, and they supposedly have lived in peace. However, with uh, villains like Maleficent and company still lurking about, I can't imagine how accurate that could possibly be, but sure, we'll go with that. Within this Mirrorverse is a magical device called the Stellar Mirror, which is the source of all magic. The powerful sorcerer, Mickey Mouse, watches over the stellar mirror to keep the magic safe. But then, the Fire Nation attack. Nah, I'm kidding. Actually, there are these beings called the Heartle uh, the Fractured, and they come from the darkness and can imitate the appearance of other well-known characters. After breaking through into the Mirrorverse, Mickey is left with no choice but to use his magic to call upon the aid of other characters to help fight off the Fractured and prevent them from overwhelming the world with darkness and or destroying it. Characters like Belle, Sully, Mr. Incredible, Baloo from Tailspin, Jack Sparrow, Ariel, and Rapunzel are the first of a handful of responders to Mickey's call for aid, but making the situation more chaotic, the Disney villains such as Maleficent, the Evil Queen, Jafar, Oogie Boogie, and so on have appeared too, and have gathered powers of their own with the intent to use them along with the Fractured to continue their evil deeds for their own personal gain. However, each villain with their own chapter is usually quickly defeated, either by being backstabbed by another villain, or falling victim themselves, or a myriad of reasons. After their defeat, it's with heavy reluctance that they are forced to join the hero's party on the adventure to thwart the Fractured, along with follow-up Disney villains who have yet to be put in their place. And considering that all of these villains are unlockable and playable, it's pretty obvious that the formula is going to be the same each time. It is a phone game, after all. The villains aren't necessarily joining the hero's cause because they believe in them, but rather they feel they will use them to do their own dirty work until the time comes when they can seize the initiative. Thankfully, our Disney heroes and princesses 
aren't stupid, and they are well aware that the bad guys can't be trusted. And despite their need to have an alliance, they will keep an eye on him, much like Lara Croft in Tomb Raider Underworld. If, no, when you step out of line, you'll get it. It was never a question of if, only when. It's really difficult to give the story for the game a review at this time because the narrative for Disney's Mirrorverse is still very young and will only continue to go on with further updates. And like with other phone games such as Tales of the Rays over in Japan, should this game continue to be profitable for Disney, Mirrorverse could be going on for years to come with the story growing and expanding in big bold ways. As of right now, though, it's very simple, fundamental, and not at all complex, but it doesn't really need to be. However, that could change later. But I was kind of thrilled at the idea that this game isn't just attempting to make the Disney cast all badass with no real thought put into why, but they are more or less just doing the multiverse thing that as of today is, well, kind of an in thing right now, ever since modern superhero movies made the multiverse concept mainstream despite it having existed in comic books for decades. It is the safest way to tell new and unique stories without there having to be consequences or retcons to the norm. And while I imagine some people may be tired of the contrivance, I don't think I'm quite there yet. I mean, just guys, just look at Snow White. You gotta admit this is cool. So now we segue into the gameplay portion of our show, because as we all know, it's not just the story, but the gameplay where things must also shine the brightest. So one thing most phone games I've played have in common is everything. Well, at least with how they function as games when it comes to progression in game. So I'll get the quick ones out of the way. Orbs are the main form of currency. You get them in small increments by playing the game normally and completing tasks daily, and little by little, the orbs along with all of the other necessary stat boosting upgrades will be acquired with time. However, there is a limit to your playtime as per usual with a meter. The more you play, the more it runs out. When it does, you can either use some of your resources to completely restore your time, or you can just wait a couple of hours and resume later. Like all mobile games, unless you intend on being a whale, playing free-to-play mode comes with the cost of only being able to play in short bursts. Freemium. The meum is Latin for not ready. Though, here is a small tidbit for those who play for free. If your energy does run out, you can currently do the 1v1 events, and it costs you no energy. You get experience for your characters, and you might even be able to work on some of the other missions that'll give you currency. So being out of energy is not a total dead end. Even then, it's not as bad as it sounds because restoring your timer isn't as costly as it could be, and also like with all these types of games, they are pretty generous with the handouts early on usually in order to entice you to keep playing, but naturally, the more you progress and the stronger you get, the faster you will consume your resources, making the question of whether or not you want to spend some real money to get you either back up and running faster or to acquire a lot more characters, goods, and upgrades faster will come down to you and how much you enjoy playing. And it is in this part where it will either make or break people's desire to continue playing this game. After all, we definitely know the rules when it comes to gacha games and how they work. But is the gameplay itself still... fun? So when you start Mirrorverse, you're given a few Disney heroes right away. For early starters, you get Rapunzel and then Merida. Oh, and how excited you'll be to get Merida, right? Ecstatic. Now, as soon as you progress, you will get various crystals that you can use to summon newer characters that can range from a 1 star to a 5 star, the latter being the more powerful. All of the summons are completely random, but depending on the crystal banner you pull from, will improve the odds on maybe getting the character you like. Now, one thing I can say that is a plus is that it wasn't hard to get just about every character available in the game up to this point. They may not all be 5 star, but despite this, when you summon the character, that character is yours and fully playable and can be improved with the resources you have and will continue to gain. By going to the upgrade section, you can improve each character's stats and abilities, giving them new powers. This is the part that will become costly over time, and you will likely start to play favorites here with the characters. But do keep in mind, 
People have already created a tier list on who they believe is the most powerful set of characters to use, so if you care for that sort of thing, you may want to be mindful as to who you focus on. However, I am not that kind of player. While the tiers may be based on character abilities, I firmly stand that in spite of this, any character will only be as good as the time you spend on getting good and efficient with them. And like I said before, your characters will sadly all be randomly pulled. So it is possible that your desired character may not be the best character. When selecting a mission, you are usually allowed to have up to a party of three, but some conditions may force you to occasionally change things up. After the mission is selected, the stage begins. Gameplay-wise, the stages are open arenas you can freely run around on similar to games like in the Tales of series. You will have control of one character on your team, and the others will act on their own. However, you can switch to any one of them at any given time if you wanted to. When enemies show up, you can attack them or use evasive maneuvers to avoid taking damage, which would be the smart move. While attacking, you can also hold down the attack for a charged attack, which will usually knock the enemies down, interrupting their attacks or spells. After a while, your characters will be able to trigger their super attacks, which, depending on the character and their abilities, can do many different things. From healing the party, devastating the enemies, nuking them from afar, there are quite a lot of variables on what these attacks can do, which is why the tier list exists. But it's just as easy to mix and match character types to see what type of gameplay works best for you. Not all characters are created equal, and they all have unique gameplay differences. I mean, you've got melee fighters, you know, the kind that like to get up close and personal, the tank class, which can tank a lot of damage, but are just as useful as melee fighters, the support class, which like to focus more of their power on buffing the party, and then there's the ranged class, which they prefer fighting from afar. My favorite team ended up being Blue from Tailspin as my main force of power, being a tank and just an all-around good combatant, Mickey Mouse as a ranged support attacker, and Judy Hobbs from Zootopia, who I found out likes to snipe at enemies from great distances. The fractured enemies, depending on how far you are in the game, will range on combat difficulty. And the numbers can and do make a difference, but to my surprise, there actually is a fair bit of player skill that can be taken advantage of here. Just because the odds seem overwhelming doesn't mean that you can't still come out on top if you are efficient at dodging and attacking when there's an opening. Color me surprised, but the combat in this game is actually enjoyable. And had it not been for a dedicated phone game, I would dare say that there is kind of enough here that if Disney wanted to make a console beat-em-up game, well, with characters as ambitious as this one, Mirrorverse is not a bad template to use. Towards the end of each round, you'll face Boss Fractures, which is an enemy that reflects a Disney character. These guys can dish out some punishment if you're not careful. However, I never found them to be too troubling, especially if you strategize here and there, and make good use of avoiding their oncoming attacks, which are usually outlined in purple, giving you time to get out of dodge. All of the other characters have their own unique fighting styles among their class, and it feels good when you hit things in this game. Just playing as Mr. Incredible, for example, and hearing the impacts of his fists on enemies is pretty satisfying. I mean, sure, I may be a little biased because it is Disney, but outside of the desire to play as these beloved characters, which on its own is kind of the main draw, the combat actually does feel like, even for a phone game, some effort was put into making it feel like a thrill to play. I mean, especially if you get to kick ass as your favorite Disney princess, or any other character. And so far, there are a good handful of characters with the promise of more to come. And hell, I can already think of five I would like to see get adapted in this adventure. With my picks being uh, Don Carnage from Tailspin. I mean, shoot, if they already got Baloo, they might as well put the rival character in. Most other characters seem to have one. Goliath from Gargoyles feels like he would be a perfect fit for this type of lineup and would make a pretty strong melee fighter in my opinion. Basil of Baker Street, the Great Mouse Detective, I think would also be a really fun one to see. Height apparently isn't an issue here since Tinkerbell is already a playable character, so I would love to see how Basil gets to whoop ass. The Great Prince of the Forest, aka Bambi's father, I think would also be a pretty ambitious and fun choice. He is royalty and pretty badass in the movies. Hell, you could even have him and Bambi be like a duo set. Kind of like uh, Lone Wolf and Cub, really. 
I mean, shoot, I just kind of rocked my mind thinking about that. Or hell, why not add Disney's Robin Hood? We already have a class where people like to shoot from afar, it's just kind of obvious that they really need to add him and make him a ranged fighter. And my number one choice for character potential for Disney's Mirrorverse would have to be... Okay, come on, it's obvious, right? It's gotta be Sora from Kingdom Hearts. I mean, think about it, the ideas practically write themselves. I mean, with Kingdom Hearts being so outrageous as it is right now with its plot, with its worlds of unreality and sleeping realms and wherever the story could go next at this point with the Xehanort saga being done, Sora would be a perfect fit here. And yeah, I know technically with Disney and Square owning the character and figuring out where they want to put him, it could be a bit of a controversial subject. But hell, if Sora can make it into Super Smash Brothers, there's no reason why he couldn't make it here. And after all, the game already has like a party of three. If you pair him up with Donald and Goofy, who are already in the game, you could probably give Sora some pretty boss powers like Trinity, where if you have Donald and Goofy on the team, he gets a big power bonus or something. I mean, come on, Disney, make it happen. I'm giving you good ideas left and right here. Yeah, anyway, back to the game. Similar to Tales of Crestoria, another phone game I reviewed a while back, and a game I correctly predicted would inevitably die sooner than we would have cared to admit, you are freely able to converse with players from around the world, add friends, and even create an alliance where you can invite players to join your team. And daily, by completing missions and quests, your alliance members can acquire points for the whole squad, allowing you all to gain some expendable points you can use in the game's shopping areas to buy a handful of things from characters, to crystals, to upgrades, and other things. And of course, I have my own alliance. You know, in case you, uh, in case you guys want to join, wink wink, nudge nudge. Speaking of the shop, this is one thing I can say this game has that is plentiful. Sure, a lot of it requires real money, but I can at least say that it's not all just about buying the currency for outrageous prices. I mean, you definitely can do that if you want to. I mean, the option's there. But there are other purchases that can serve you just as well without having to really break the bank. Some of these purchases can actually even guarantee you the character you want, along with power-ups and other unlockables. So while the crystals do serve as RNG in order to get good characters, I am at least thankful that there are a handful of other ways you can go about getting the characters you want, either for free with a little work, or by spending some money, but at least you are guaranteed the character. Unlike other phone games where you'll pay money, but it still comes down to the random pull, and if you are just cursed with bad luck, you may have wasted money and didn't even get the character you want at all. I mean, it's still possible here too, but thankfully to a much smaller degree. Unless you buy the character outright, in which case you're golden. Really, the hassle with this game won't be much about whether or not you get the character, but how many stars that character has, which will increase their potential. Outside of the main story, there are other modes to play as well, from the occasional events that will show up with their own stories, or the towers and dungeons where you will battle your way to the top with conditions for each fight, making things a little more challenging, but all the more rewarding for you and your alliance if you win. I'm not gonna pretend that there isn't some heavy grind work to be done here. Again, if you aren't planning on spending money regularly, the upgrades to grow your characters will become harder to get, the more powerful you get. So playing regularly and completing your dailies will be a bit of a time commitment. So there's your warning. As of now, Disney's Mirrorverse is only a couple of weeks old. The game is very fresh and updates and expansions will only continue to come out and improve upon the game and there will be new stuff coming all the time. It's a mobile game, of course, so it should be expected. And that free-to-play tagline really should always come with an asterisk. But this is just the nature of mobile gaming and how it's going to be. So there really is no point in really complaining about it because it's a proven formula that does work. I mean, hey, as long as this formula stays on cell phone games, I'll be happy. I mean, I know a few greedy companies tried their hand at adapting this to the mainstream, to some uh, pretty heavy and warranted backlash. But anyway, as far as Disney's Mirrorverse is concerned, I feel like there is a good game in here, regardless of whether or not you want to play for free or spend some money from time to time. Just be careful not to go overboard. And there you guys have it. 
I mean, as fun as it may be, Disney's Mirrorverse, at the end of the day, is still a cell phone game. And if you chose not to support these types of games, I totally don't blame you. In fact, I may be even with you to a large degree when it comes to a vast majority of them. I'm not the type of gamer that likes to be nickel and dimed, and I would far prefer paying a flat fee for an entire experience rather than getting a free one only to be nickel and dimed every step of the way. But that's just the nature of the business. It's not necessarily one person's fault, it's just how they've chosen to do things. But that doesn't mean that just because it's a cell phone game it's doomed to not be fun or have quality content there within. So it does at least provide some entertainment even if some of it you gotta pay for. So guys, let me know in the comments what do you think. Have you played Disney's Mirrorverse? Do you plan to play it at all? Do you enjoy the characters? What characters would you like to see? I would love to hear all of your thoughts and opinions. Meanwhile guys, thank you so much for watching. I'm William Morris from the Brotherhood of Gaming. If you're new to the channel, we would love to see you come back and show your support again. So if you want, you can leave a like, leave a comment, subscribe, and do all of that supporting stuff. We really, really, really appreciate it. And for all of our regulars who have been with us throughout many years, thank you so much for continuing to enjoy our show. And uh, we can't wait to see you again. Anyway, guys, I got more work to do, more videos to make. And uh, yeah, just a lot more coming. Until then, see you next time.